get him creepy crabs are right the Something's coming up the plumbing for Luigi's in a bind. Giant turtles out to get him creepy crabs are right behind. Fighter flies, cheaper shites, they're all coming out the pipes. Mario, where are you? It's Atari Mario Brothers with Mario from Donkey Kong, his brother Luigi, and lots of crazy creatures. And it's twice the fun when two play at once, because you need all the help you can get. Mario, where are you? Mario Brothers, new from Atari. <laughs> Could you hear that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Geeky Geezers. That was the old commercial for Mario Brothers for Atari. That was pretty awesome. Uh, th the thing is, though, that it was actually not a bad depiction, uh, you know, interpreting what happens in the game as <laughs> though it was real life, which was creepy as heck when you really start to think about it. Yeah. Now, this was before they became the Super Mario Brothers. This was just plain Mario Brothers. And this is, they're stuck in the sewers fighting off all sorts of horrible things in the sewers. Uh, I don't know if you had this game for the Atari 2600 or a computer or anything back in the day, Troy, but. Hello? Did I mute you? <laughs> He's muted. Oh, I see. Did I mute him? Maybe he muted himself. All right. Uh, how you doing tonight? Deleted scene, special guest. Okay, blah, blah, blah. We're all over the place tonight. Sorry Hello, about welcome. that, man. <laughs> I, okay. I, I didn't realize. Netter moved my mic and it, it went out on me. It's okay. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I had the, I didn't have the 5600. I had the, the uh, 2600. So uh, by the time I, I uh, got around to upgrading, it was uh, over to the Commodore. So I never got that game. Hmm. Apparently there was a 2600 version. I'm kind of curious as to how it turned out, but uh... Uh, probably not as good a graphics. And those graphics didn't look all that to begin with. They looked all right. They were yeah. almost comparable to the arcade. Not quite up there, but um, yeah, the original Mario Brothers. This was before Super Mario Brothers. But uh, hello, uh, Auditor Dread. Good evening to the geezers. The dynamic duo, the powerful pair, the gamer, and the collectible collector. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and also welcoming tonight, Deleted Scenes, uh, our, 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 our resident movie buff. Welcome. Hello. What you sipping on, Deleted Scenes? Uh, I still have my uh, glass of tea from the previous show. <laughs> tea, tea is good. What about you, Troy? What you sipping on? I'm sipping on a wild cherry sparkling water. <clears throat> that actually sounds rather good. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, tonight is a Super Mario Brothers special. I figure it's Easter. I didn't want to bog us down on a holiday weekend with a full show, but I figured I should do something, and I figured, why don't I go see the Super Mario Brothers movie? Everyone's talking about it. Uh, Deleted Scenes has also seen the Super Mario Brothers movie, so he can chime in as well. He did a review on his channel you can check out. But first, let's say hi to the chat. Matanui, welcome. Uh, Crispy, good evening, gents and chat. Have to catch on the rewatch. Have a great show and happy Easter. Uh, we're all going to have about an hour stream tonight, but also check out Netter's Network because I'm going to be hopping over there with Troy and I think Deleted Scenes are going to be doing a rewatch yep. of It's the Easter Beagle, Charlie Brown. So that should be a lot of fun. But uh, X-Men, 90s animated series style previously on Gears. Oh, yes. I remember oh. the X-Men. Did you used to watch the X-Men cartoon back in the 90s? Maybe not. Maybe you asking me? That things. I, yes. Yeah, yeah. I guess. I mean, I, I don't think I avidly watched it, but yeah, I, I watched it. It was on. Came, aired around the same time as Super uh, as a Batman the Animated Series. All right, but uh, hello, the chat. Uh, due to Easter events, I won't be able to see this until the rewatch. But I wanted to drop by and say hi. Have a great stream. Thank you, Horizon Talker. And uh, Netters Network. Be the hi, sweetie from Netters. Thank you. Uh, hello, love of my life for Troy. It's always good. Having a love of your life, that's always good, right? Right. Absolutely. Would it be wrong to say Mario is the love of my life? Uh, Table that for another I, conversation. That's, that's, <laughs> that's really up to you to decide, man. I can't say whether that's right or wrong. but uh, Actually, I could say Nintendo. I, I don't want to say love of my life, but maybe the love of my childhood. There you go. Uh, Nintendo was a big deal. Still is. I mean, I still buy Nintendo consoles and still play the modern games, too. Don't have as much time Did as I used to. Did you imagine yourself rescuing uh, uh, Princess Peach, or was she more of a girl boss in your mind? <sighs> <laughs> I 
I always treated the Mario games, and if, as they went on, they got goofier as a lark. The whole thing with Princess Peach getting captured, it's like the Snidely Whiplash, you know, tying right. the woman up by the train tracks. None of it's supposed to be taken all that seriously. And Nintendo still has fun with that, even in the modern games. I remember one of the RPGs on the N64 Paper Mario where Princess Peach gets kidnapped by Bowser. And, of course, she's, she's being strung up in a cage. And then at some point, you you get to play as Princess Peach in the cage, and then you get loose. And so you start wandering wandering around Bowser's castle talking to different characters, and it's the funniest thing. It's like, because here's the damsel in distress, but you're sort of playing as her, and you go, yeah. you know, you go talk to the one wishing star that said, Bowser wanted evil wishes, like making Peach love him and things like that. And, you know, it's just this whole... It's a goof. Well, the original, especially with like Donkey Kong and whatnot, the whole idea mm -hmm. of, of Princess Peach constantly getting captured really fell under the whole like Lois Lane thing, right? Sure. I remember a, a parody that I saw where Superman is like, I got to save Lois Lane again? For crying out loud, I spend more time rescuing her than I do the whole rest of the world. I should just <laughs> let her die. Oh, Connie Cleary, welcome. Lady Mist, welcome. Uh, Daniel Heron, happy Easter. Uh, D. Pensek, happy Easter as well. Uh, so that's good. But uh, yeah, uh, what's my history with Mario? Um, we got an NES. I did not get the edition of the NES that came with Mario. I eventually bought it on my own later on. I do notice that whenever people talk about Mario, they don't go all the way back to uh, to like Donkey Kong. That's really where he starts. It is where he started. I think some people don't realize he was in Donkey Kong before they started calling him Mario, yeah. if I'm saying that correctly. They were calling him Jumpman back, back right. in the old days. But yeah, that was the Mario character. And he goes on to be in other games like Mario Brothers mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a game called Wrecking Crew, which is referenced in the new Super Mario Brothers movie that just came out. Wow. Uh, th there's a scene in the beginning of it where he runs into his old boss and he says, the stupid Mario Brothers, you shouldn't have left the Wrecking Crew. And uh, it's a reference to the fact that he used to work for the Wrecking Crew. That was more of a demolition type game, do you understand? Yeah. So it was kind of a neat little reference there. So you saw deleted scenes, right? Yes, I did. Okay. I got So I, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I uh, Wednesday afternoon. Well, no, well, evening, but uh, yeah. I saw it Thursday. I saw it Thursday mm -hmm. evening. Bought the tickets ahead of time. Didn't know if it would be a hipster circus in there. That's a joke I make. When they released the NES Classic <laughs> mini console a few years ago, I went to the Best Buy the day the day it came out to see if I could snag it, myself a copy. And there was a line, and I called it a hipster circus. And, of course, Nintendo only gave about five per store. So I didn't even bother. I, like, left the line. I'm like, I'm uh... not dealing with this. Um. I made some notes, though, about the character we see in this new Super Mario Brothers movie. Um, he is working class. He is Italian-American. He has a Brooklyn accent. He's a short guy. Uh, he's trying to start his own business, trying to be an entrepreneur, and he doesn't quit. So I figure already the mainstream media hates him. Yeah, yeah and you're right. totally able to see that in the uh, uh, ratings and whatnot. Yeah. <sighs> but, uh... I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was good. I have to let it sink in some more. I don't know if I'm there at calling it great yet, but it it, it as the days have worn on, the affection I have for this movie has grown. Um, I don't know how you feel the same way of deleted scenes because you went into it kind of a Mario novice. You didn't know too much about these games. You probably knew of them, but you're not an avid player. Is that right? Uh, that's correct. Um, well, you know, for sure I knew more about it than Grace Randolph. Oh, uh, we'll we'll uh, get to her in a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I I went into it somewhat blind, you know. I mean, I I'm, I was aware of who the characters were, how they interacted with each other. I knew a little bit about the worlds that they were in, but I was not uh, very detail oriented about it. So I went into the movie relatively blind, and right. uh, came out of it. Uh, the, genuinely surprised by how much the, the I was going to like it. I thought I was, okay, it's going to be a kid's movie or, you know, I'm going to be bored by it. But, uh, you know, I went into it worried that it was going to be another Nutcracker in the Four Realms. 
I am curious to see Nutcracker in the Four Realms because I heard it was such a trash fire. It is. In fact, that's um, not the only Nutcracker movie that was a trash fire. Didn't they do another one with was it Elle Fanning that was supposed to be a disaster as well? And huh. I don't know. That could be a whole subgenre of bad well, movies or bad bad yeah. adaptations of the Nutcracker, but. You know, well, what what happened with that one was uh, it had two directors because the, the first director left halfway through the movie. Oh no! And you can tell because you have two directors, Lassa Hallstrom and Joe Johnston, and you have two very different styles, and they clash. Plus, you also have Morgan Freeman playing a German. Wow! Well, uh, there's, well, there's that. <laughs> there's that, but we like Morgan Freeman. But yeah, that's a little we do. that's a little we, odd. He's he's um, the best part of the movie, actually. He probably is. Um, what I found, what I had heard about that movie was that Disney was trying to make a Tim Burton style movie without having to actually pay Tim Burton. That's yeah. what that grand experiment was supposed to be, and of course, wow. it didn't didn't end up working. Uh, this yeah. movie pretty pretty good though. Um, yeah. <clears throat> So I am a long time. I'm per, I'm fairly knowledgeable of the Mario games. They, they Nintendo keeps making them. They didn't stop making Mario games. They didn't stop with the '90s. They they have made Mario games since I guess eighty eighty five or eighty six, and they they've been every couple of years they'll bring in a Mario game. Plus there are a ton of spin off titles. They're Mario sports games. There's of course the racing game Mario Kart. They're Mario role playing games, which are rather hilarious because uh, they're very dialogue driven. One was called Bowser's Inside Story, where I believe that Mario and Luigi get swallowed whole by Bowser, and they're inside his intestinal tract fighting monsters, I guess, like microbes and things. While at the same time, they have to kind of steer Bowser to fight the other bad guys on the surface. It's a, it's the most bizarre little game. That could be the plot of a movie, actually. Yeah. They could, they could get sucked inside Bowser. Okay, so this movie, I kind of feel like this is a callback to... Okay, one of the complaints was he doesn't have an Italian accent in this. He has a Brooklyn accent because I feel they are kind of going back almost to the 1980s cartoon show where Mario, Mario, Mario and Luigi are from Brooklyn and they have the New York accent. So I think they were going there. In fact, there's even a joke where they do their commercial for the Mario Brothers plumbing and uh, you actually he see a character next to them and it's Charles Martinet almost looking like an older Mario. And he's mm -hmm. saying... I think it's wonderful. Wahoo! And he does the whole Italian, the, the fake Italian accent nice. for the games. It's kind of a neat little little homage there. Um, it, so that was where they went with that. So I think that's why he doesn't have the Italian accent. Um, but uh, there's some interesting things in it. Um, what was your favorite part of the movie? I happened to like it when they were starting out their plumbing business. Did you, did you like that part? That's very clever because they went back to uh, what they did with the original trailer, which was that, uh, and it wasn't really a trailer. It was basically that commercial. Yes, from the and Super that Bowl. like Gangbusters, yeah. And yeah. Um, so I, I did like the beginning portion. And, you know, if, if I had to pick a favorite uh, a scene of the movie, it's obviously Mario Kart. Yeah, the Rainbow Road you, sequence when they're going you there. You have the Rainbow Road where it basically turns into Mad Max for 10 minutes. <laughs> you know, um, Basically, yeah, it's kind of funny because they were interviewing um, Anya Taylor-Joy. Jo Someone guy was interviewing her and he was saying, so you, uh, you were in this movie and you're going to be in Furiosa. And she says, yes. And she's like, oh, I just realized we had the we had the, we had had a Max Mad Max style scene in the Mario movie, you know, with her. <laughs> With with the them going up against Bowser's minions on the carts and it's like a whole road road warrior style battle. Yeah. It's it's kind of funny. And and you have that one minion that just suddenly becomes the the lead character in the movie for a moment. <laughs> He's just like out of nowhere is trying to kill them. <laughs> you know, one well, with the big with the with the big cart that was mauling yeah. all the carts on the track and they. I think that's finally when Donkey Kong and Mario finally work together for once, and they yeah. stop it and they destroy his cart, and he gets furious, and he actually blows up part of the track. Yeah, and they, they're going to be spoilers <laughs> in, the, in our discussion. I just want to warn everybody if you are, are wanting to still see the yeah. movie unencumbered, leave now. But uh, yeah, they blow part of the spoilers. But the way you're sharing them, you're all over the place. Of course, I'm not, I am. It's not really spoiling anything. I'll yeah. I'll have I'll have the hardest time just keeping track of these things in my head when I go see this. Oh my goodness. Anyway, getting back to the beginning of the movie, though, I wanted to oh, bring sorry. something. Yeah. 
up, which what I thought was interesting, and I think what this movie is supposed to be about, because I was thinking, like, what's the theme of this movie? What's it about? Um, think about the, that scene with the plumbing scene. They, him and Lu- He and Luigi have a very bad first day on the job. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he gets home and his par- parents and family are criticizing him. I think his dad says, don't drag your brother down with you. Because I guess he, he sunk both him and him and Luigi's life savings into this uh, into this startup plumbing business, right? And they have a really wow. bad first day. And he's kind of moping. He's still living at home. He, you know, I, I think there's a sad scene where he's actually playing a Nintendo game, right? But he can't even focus on that. And he turns it off. Wow. And I really feel for him here because he's trying to do his best. He's... You know, he, he's trying to be an entrepreneur. He's actually trying to be fair to the customers, too, by giving them the best deal in town. And it's just, it's not working. And it makes me think about why I got into NES games and Nintendo games and video games in general to begin with. And video games allow us to fail. You have permission to fail in a video game. That's true. Um, you, you play a level of Super Mario Brothers, and if you never play it for the first time, you're going to get killed by a Goomba, you die. You may lose all three of your lives pretty quickly, but you can start over again. And you can keep getting kicked back and kicked back. But eventually you might beat the first level. Then you might be, beat the first uh, the first world. And eventually, you know, you do get better at the game. And there aren't a lot of opportunities in the world where you're allowed this. Like, let's say you're learning uh, sports for the first time. Maybe you'll have a good teacher. Like, maybe your dad's telling you to play catch. Your dad might get impatient with you for not knowing how to catch the ball uh, if you're in gym class, you mess up, even if it's a, just a small game. But you know, you get yelled at by your, uh, by you know, your teammates because you you, ha- you you screwed up and you had them lose the game. Whereas with a video game, at least a single player game, you can fail as many times as you as you need to and keep going on. And you know, there are little things in the movie like Mario doesn't know the terrain of the Mushroom Kingdom. Um, that's why he fails so much at this training course that Princess Peach has set up, and he keeps failing over and over again. Uh, but we know he's capable of beating this course because earlier in the movie you see him in Brooklyn jumping around, and they do it like a Mario stage. He knows Brooklyn like the back of his hand, but since this is new territory, and there's even a part, uh, you know, where where, where he has a, where he asks her if he had, she had any trouble with this course, and she said, "Well, no, but but I grew up here," and I think she's mm-hmm. trying to make a point to him that you know you're still getting used to this world and the rules and you shouldn't be hard on yourself because of that. You know, you did yeah. great in that last round. You almost beat the course. Um, that, that's one this, of the, mm-hmm. sorry, that, that, that's one of the scenes that gets uh, lambasted is her being quote unquote, a girl boss, but they always yeah. leave out. They always leave out or don't listen to that line. I was born here. Yeah. You know, she, she's more, more I, I, she she she's mm-hmm. lived in that world and has this knowledge that he doesn't have and she's got this very quick amount of time uh, to uh, uh transfer that to mario i was reminded in that sequence a mm-hmm. lot of uh, uh, uh edge of tomorrow you mm-hmm. know the whole training yes scene, uh, uh, there where you know that that's not emily blunt being a girl boss that's i have been in combat and you haven't Yes. Yeah, oh, Edge see, of this, Tomorrow is a brilliant does, movie. This does mm-hmm. seem like the kind of situation where people might just be a little bit too sensitive uh, because of all the uh, the woke content we've been getting Yeah. Uh, to kind of put that aside and go, you know what? Sometimes gender isn't even a factor in a narrative. Sometimes something as simple as two human beings with two different life experiences that grew up in two different places. When the girl has the home court advantage, well, guess what? She's got the wisdom you lack. Yes. And there are going to be other times you have the wisdom that she lacks. Sounds to me like a successful marriage. Yeah, there's there's actually no disrespect between these two characters. Like, there's no, no, oh, you know nothing, and she doesn't act like he knows nothing. In fact, there's a wonderful scene later on in the movie when they're on the track, and she's saying, you mean where you come from, turtles aren't evil? And he says, no, people keep them as pets. And she says, really? And he says, come to come to Brooklyn sometime, I'll buy you a turtle. And, and then, of course, Donkey Kong ruins that scene by coming by, and he's saying, is that you flirting? Ha, 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 ha. And then Mario grumbles, I'm, I was just being nice, you know, and, which I think he was, but. I do think Peach is liking him a little as the movie goes on too. So, yeah. so does is yeah. for 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 the guy that you know is so concerned about not mm-hmm. ever 
getting any Donkey Kong love, do they make some allusion to the idea that the events of Donkey Kong might have happened at some point in the past? They do not. Um, I doesn't mean they couldn't still happen in the future in this world. You never know. He could end up visiting Brooklyn and then he sees Pauline and then all heck breaks loose. But um, no, they do the thing where he's he's from the Kong Kingdom. In fact, one of the plot lines of the movie is Princess Peach is, has to go to the Kong Kingdom to recruit soldiers to protect the Toads, and she knows the, you know, the gorillas might be able to put his end to Bowser because Bowser is planning to invade the Mushroom Kingdom. She needs she needs help, and she brings Mario along to help convince. And of course, the King of the Dons, he's like, "No, we're not going to help you." But then I think someone makes some outrageous thing like, "If you could beat my son in one on one combat or something, you can do it." And the Mario's, "I'll do it." And then, of course, Mario has to go one on one with Donkey Kong, and it's a fun scene. And it's, it's again, this is this movie is a, in many way respects, it's a whole. It's almost like Mario keeps getting setback after setback. But what does he do? He he brushes himself off and gets right back up, and tackles the challenge again and again and again. In fact, uh, he doesn't like to quit. In fact, uh, he's saying it like it's a bad thing because I guess that's. You know how, like, some people will say someone, you just don't know when to quit, do you? And, you know, like, like I think he got criticism for his family for having that, you yeah. know, tenacity about him. Um, but he does, he does eventually beat Donkey Kong after after it, punching the right power thing and getting the right ability. So. It really does seem to be another commentary on modern society that I'm sure certain people are having problems with this on. Because the right answer to that is, yes, I know when to quit. Never. Because as soon as you quit, you fail. Yeah. Exactly. And um, let me see. Movie has setbacks. Track. Um, oh, I want to make a point. Mario does save his brother. It's not Princess Peach. There mm-hmm. is a scene in it where Princess Peach uh, is kind of being coerced into Mary Bowser. He's going to torture the toad, so she agrees. But she's trying to figure a way out of it. And then, of course, he says, I'm going to ritualistically s- sacrifice all my prisoners in front of you while we get married. And I think she freezes the chain to make sure that doesn't happen. But it, all it does is stall. Mario and Donkey Kong, when they arrive, they're the ones that save everybody, mm-hmm. including Mario saving his brother. So, you know, big spoiler alert. But uh, I mm-hmm. and, and and this is where I have to ask out of ignorance sure. to the games. That happens in games too, doesn't it? I mean, where what? Mario has to rescue Luigi, or sometimes you're playing as Princess Peach and she. I guess probably rescues people. Yeah, there have been games you could play as Peach. Um, there was Super Princess Peach, which is kind of a lark because she gets her powers from her emotional state, which, of course, that that annoyed people when that came out. Uh, but even in m- more recent games like um, Super Mario 3D World, you can play as Princess Peach as one of the four characters. Um, Super Mario Brothers 2, you could play as her even back in the 8 bit days. So, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. Um, give me one sec. Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm trying to think, though. Uh, there's a part at the end of the movie, though. I don't know if you remember this part, deleted scenes, where, let's just say, even after Mario has saved the Mushroom Kingdom from getting blown to bits, it's still not over, and somehow Bowser and his minions end up... This is a big spoiler, I hate to say this, but tune out now. Uh, They end up in Brooklyn, right? Mm -hmm. And I was shocked because one of my dreams for a Mario game would have been like Bowser and his minions invading the United States, like invading New York City. And you sort of get a taste of that in this movie. And I think at that point, things are going wrong. And I think Mario finally gets winded and he he runs and hides in the pizza parlor. He's actually scared for once in the movie. And he's like, and I think Mm -hmm. it's also cumulative frustration that he keeps trying his best, but things keep going wrong. And I think he eventually does. He does pull himself together and get back out there. And him and Luigi stop the the villain of the movie finally. But uh, mm-hmm. it was an interesting moment, I thought, in the movie when that happened. So I think I just spoiled the movie for everybody. But it's a fun ride, regardless. So I do recommend it. Um, if you're a longtime Mario fan, I think you'll enjoy it. There are Easter eggs. I, I think people keep making a big deal out of the Easter eggs. I don't think they're in your face. I think they're just kind of there in the background. Like, when he's in the pizza parlor, you see different punch-out fighters on the wall. Like, you would see in, like, Rocky's, like, like Rocky's restaurant, you might see different boxes. That sounds to me... But they're from the me, video game Punch-Out. Yeah. That mm-hmm. sounds to me like exactly the way you would go about uh, seeding your 
you know, interconnected universe without the stupid, you know, you know, this movie has nothing to do with what the title's about. It's really about the setup for the next movie. <sighs> yeah, no, no, do little hints. I, I hope they do a punch out movie. That would be cool. Um, they could. I mean, if they if this is the movie that is truly the the quote unquote the Iron Man for this Nintendo cinematic universe, then I tell you, I'm in for the next one for sure. Well, Rather it's hard it to say Punch Out or Metroid or you know, I'm hearing rumors there might be a Perfect Dark movie now. Um, Metroid would be good, but yeah. is that truly a, a Nintendo film? I mean. I'm not sure about the rights on that. No, it is. Perfect Dark isn't owned by Nintendo, but uh, it used to be. Oh, okay. um, Metroid Metroid is... Uh, I don't know if I see that as an animated feature, though, but maybe they can make it work as an animated feature. The thing is with the with the Mario games is that there there are... In the Nintendo universe, there, there, there are things tied to Mario. Like, there's... Donkey Kong is still related. And when you get the Donkey Kong Country games, Donkey Kong is still related to Mario. Right. Um, you could theoretically set a punch out game in the Mario universe because in the old punch out game, Mar- Mario was a referee. Oh. Um, I don't know how they would even link Zelda or Metroid to Mario or if they would just make them their own things, unless, of course, they do a Smash Brothers movie someday. Do you know what Smash Brothers is? Troy? I do, yeah. Although, ba- I will mm-hmm. say this mm-hmm. you know, Netter likes to watch those, uh, those fashion uh, reality shows where they always say, well, it doesn't have to be so matchy-matchy. Well, that's how I feel about some of these interconnected universes. Sometimes they don't have to be completely integrated. You could do a Metroid movie that has absolutely nothing to do with the characters from, from Mario Brothers. They may or may not exist in the same world. You know, it mm. doesn't always have to directly relate to each other. No, that's true. And to be fair, um, I know that with some Zelda games, they do little goofs in them sometimes. Like in Link's Awakening, Link would go into a dungeon that would be a Goomba walking around. Do you understand? That is interesting. It, 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 even though it turns out that the thing is a, is a dream. See, I'm spoiling another game, but it turns out it's a dream that you're that you're walking through. So that's why a lot of the stuff is just and that, weird. And that mm-hmm. will kind of be part of the world building for this because how how is Brooklyn connected to, you know, the, the land of Princess Peach and all these other kinds of things? How could it be connected to Link and so forth? Are, are, is, it, is there a dream world? Is there... I hate to say this, but a multiverse kind of thing? Or, you know, what connects, you know, the worlds? I don't know. Um, Theoretically, you could have uh, Zelda taking place in another world. Zelda's a weird series, though, because those games take place over eons. Yeah. Like, one Zelda game may take place 20,000 years after the prior one. Do you understand? See, it's I always yeah. imagined yeah. With, with Super Mario Brothers that mm-hmm. every time he would jump into a pipe... He would go to another world, so it was like those pipes were somehow the portals to other universes. They kind of play with that in this movie. Like, that's how he gets to the Mushroom Kingdom to begin with. He goes in a special pipe and gets sucked out, and there are all these tubes that go to the different kingdoms, and I think Luigi ends up on the wrong tomb to Bowser's kingdom. I, I do want to say, like, voice acting is mixed in this. I think that, um, mm-hmm. Char- I think it was Charlie Day did Luigi. He was great. Um, who did Toad? Uh, Keegan Michael Key. Keegan Michael Key. Yeah, he was really good as Toad. Yeah. I, I was How surprised. Because this is probably the biggest question I've had since <clears throat> uh, since I saw the first trailer. What did you think of uh, um, Chris Pratt as uh, Mario? I thought he was fine. Uh, you know, yeah. he's trying to do a New York accent, which is hit or miss sometimes. But that's fine as long as he's trying to do the New York accent. I can give up the, you know, the the overly done Italian accent if you're at least going for a Brooklyn accent. Yeah. Um, but it, it it's just funny though, but I, I I he must have done a good job because I actually ended up really identifying with this Mario character who is a little more realized than the character we see in the video games because he's just like I say, he is kind of down on his luck at the beginning of the movie, but he still pulls himself up by just by the bootstraps and like when there's being a big flooding disaster in New York, he says, this is our chance in front of, you know, to, to help solve this problem for the city and maybe we'll get our good name back. And that's how, that's when they encounter the pipes and mushroom kingdom. But, I don't know, what did you think of Chris Pratt deleted scenes? 
I thought he was fine. He 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 underplays it. You know, he does. No, he, yes. he, he 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 doesn't go. I think he he realized. Hey, I'm not going to be able to do. You know, hey, hey, Mario, and you yeah, know, he, he, and just you know, go for Brooklyn, and just stick with that. And uh, yeah. if I had not known it was him going in, I wouldn't have known. Yeah, neither I would I. He, I. he thought, doesn't sound thought, like him. I thought he did great. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, um, he 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 did what he could with 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 what he has, and uh, I tell you, it wasn't distracting to me at all. Yeah. And I'm trying to think. They left it open for a sequel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, do you think it did well enough to merit a sequel? Well, why don't we get to that now? Let's. I'm gonna <laughs> do, it. do you have the articles, or should I cut and paste them? I, I have. Oh, I, I actually do. I can actually okay. earn my keep here. You don't. You're second. earning are your keep every every we, week. Come on. Are we going in the order that? Uh, They're I, going in the order that you paste them in the notes. I just exactly. copied them from the. Uh, from the uh, yeah. Geeky Geezer's notes, so we want. And to be honest with you, I think even the uh, even this article has been updated since then. Of course, this mm -hmm. would have to be Star Wars Celebration Week with a ton of news, and I'm like, oh, really? This be the week I don't do a regular stream. But I got to be honest with you, I've been following all the news, and I am way underwhelmed. Yeah. Oh yeah, we I could really talk about am. that. I know we talked a bit a bit on your Friday stream, actually. We did. We'll get probably get more into it next week, but. Uh, Okay, so you got the first one? Yeah, it's up. This is, of course, changing. Uh, this is a big hit. After nearly delivering one of the top 10 biggest Wednesdays in domestic box office history, Universal's release of Illuminations, the Super Mario Brothers movie continued to pull four quadrant crowds on Thursday, grossing an estimated $22 million. On its first day of release, Super Mario pulled... 31.7 million from over 4,000 domestic theaters, which ranks 11 on the list of the biggest Wednesdays of all time. The film's running domestic total after two days of release now stands at a little over 53 million. Uh, Super Mario is on track to gross 92 million in its first three days and 141 million across its extended five day debut. This is one of the higher end projections, which were conservatively pegged at under 130 million just yesterday. If the projections hold, keep in mind the final figure could easily be higher. Super Mario will deliver the second best five-day debut for an Illumination title behind Despicable Me 2's 143 million debut a decade ago. Uh, it remains to be seen how front-loaded Mario is held perform on Good Friday. Yeah, this is from a few days ago. But things are looking up for the animated film directed by Aaron Horvath and Michael Jelinek. Super Mario is based on the popular video game franchise that follows adventures of two sibling plumbers who find themselves in the middle of a brewing war in a colorful new world. Super Mario isn't just appealing to children. Kids haven't really had a film target at them since December's Puss in Boots' The Last Wish, but also their parents, who probably grew up playing the game. For all of its box office success, Super Mario has received mixed reviews and currently sits at 54% Rotten Tomatoes score on the review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes. Collider's own Ross Bonham, however, called it a colorful adventure, bringing with references a joyous celebration of this franchise's history and the history of early Nintendo, one of the best kids' films in recent years in his review. Uh, this is the second attempt to launch a franchise based on the Mario games after a doomed live-action film in 1993. Fun fact, the new Super Mario made more money in one day than that 1993 film made in its entire <laughs> domestic <laughs> run. That's, that's I, actually sad but funny. I saw the original movie in the theaters back in the day. Did you know that? So you were one of those people, okay. <laughs> I was one of the few. I didn't hate it, and I still don't hate it, but granted, I haven't really seen it since I saw it in the theaters. I thought it was odd. Um, I didn't hate it as much as The Wizard. That was which, the one with Bob Hoskins? Bob Hoskins and Dennis Hopper as Bowser in that movie, That's or right. King That's Koopa, right. or whatever they called him in that movie. He was the Bowser equivalent. Kind of interesting. Um, it, it, it's a flawed film, and I'm not... But I didn't hate it back in the day. It just, it, it's just... Nintendo obviously hated it. They, they and wasn't there that a, movie. Wasn't there a live action version of Mario played by Lou Albano? That was on the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, which was a uh which was a after school animated show, which Okay, okay. You would get a little a live action segment with uh Captain Lou Albano and uh I don't forget who played Mario and I don't forget who played Luigi. Then you'd get a Mario cartoon. 
and then you would get a uh, 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 you get Mario cartoons Monday through Thursday. Then Friday you would still get Cap- Captain Lou Battles Mario in live action segments, but then you'd get a Legend of Zelda cartoon on Fridays. Oh, okay. And I don't know what to say. Part of me even thought as a joke for the stream we would rewatch one of the old Mario cartoon episodes, but they're they're hit and miss. There's some things I like about them, some things I don't. It's uh, there was also Captain N. They had a lot of these cartoon series that were marketed to sell toys. Well, this, these were cartoon series marketed to sell Nintendo games, obviously. Sure. And they weren't bad. They weren't terrible. And like I said, there were certain things I liked. That, like this may be where the mythos of them being from Brooklyn came from, which I think Nintendo got rid of later on. But now it seems to be back with this new movie. So yeah. maybe in the movie universe, they're still from the United States, from Brooklyn. I think that changed in the game universe. I'm not sure where they came from. I think in the... Uh, Origins in the actual Nintendo game series, something went wrong with storks dropping the babies off in the wrong place. Like, I guess they were supposed to drop them off in Italy and drop them off in the Mushroom Kingdom by accident or some such stuff like that. But anyway, I don't know. Maybe they're back to the Brooklyn origin now. I don't know. Uh, but uh, Super Mario is already guaranteed to set new box office opening records for video game adaptations, handily outclassing. Paramount Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which grossed 72 million in its traditional three day debut in 2022. Yeah, but that one still did well for a 2022 release when people were still yeah, it did. to go in theaters. Yeah. Uh, but video game movies have been rather hit or miss, and not just in terms of quality, neither Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, 3 to 36 million worldwide, nor Assassin's Creed, 240 million worldwide, were able to successfully launch franchises. And even with 400. Million plus worldwide halls, both Uncharted and Warcraft, were also thought to have underperformed. But curiously enough, movies inspired by older arcade and 8 bit titles, Sonic the Hedgehog, 319 million worldwide, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, 405 million worldwide, Rampage, 428 million worldwide. That Rampage may still be the best video game adaptation I've ever seen. <laughs> but, and Detective P- Pikachu, 433 million worldwide, works significantly better. Um,. So yeah, uh, I would I would actually rank this on the level of the Sonic the Hedgehog movies. I don't know if you've seen those, Troy. Um, no, I have not. They're good movies with heart and uh, movies you can feel comfortable taking the family to go see and not get a bunch of woke wet messaging while sure. you're watching them. So that's that's always nice. Uh, and I have to say, I think this bodes well for us, especially if we're not liking a certain House of Mouse. That maybe what we need to start doing is supporting some of these animated features by the rival companies. Like, I'm actually feeling bad in December that I didn't talk up uh, Puss in Boots The Last Witch more. Because um, from what I could tell, that's a really good movie that people are raving about now. Are you a fan of the Shrek franchise, either of you? Or Oh, very much so, yeah. Yeah, this this last Puss in Boots is supposed to be really good, and apparently it's, it's available on streaming if you have Peacock, or you can rent it, or, you know... Find other means to watch it if you need to, but uh, it's supposed to be very good. So, uh, I'm trying to think what else though. Um, the Minions movies you saw, Rise of Gru. Uh, what was it? The Rise of Gru. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you like that? There was a little I joke did. at the beginning, the beginning of the Mario movie, with a minion trying to start up a, Mar- a cart for Mario Kart and, and unsuccessfully doing it. No kidding. Yeah, okay. it was a little, little little goof there, but uh, yeah. Daniel Heron enjoyed the Mario movie back in the 90s. I Yeah, like I said, I'd have to rewatch it. Uh, I know John Leguizamo won't shut up about it. He's a dumbass. And He's part of the dumbass. problem, too, is he keeps saying there are no Latinos cast in this new Mario movie, and I keep trying to say that Anya Taylor-Joy is a Latina, so I don't know <laughs> what he's going on about. What he means is they didn't cast him. He wanted to do a because voice. That's what's going on here. He's, yeah. He strikes me as someone who's very stuck on himself. I don't understand. His career is not doing terribly. He was even in that uh, that Santa Claus movie that came out on Christmas time that, yeah. that had the Santa Claus taking out the terrorists. And, I mean, he's still he, getting parts. Yeah, I, and he just did a movie with Anya Taylor-Joy, uh, The Menu, uh, which I understand is very good, so... I don't know I, what he yeah. was going on about. He's not doing himself is, any favors. Help me no, out, guys. He's not. Anya Taylor Joy is she the one that was in that movie uh, where <laughs> she has all the weird dreams and she sees herself as, as someone else in the mirror and stuff? 
Yeah, um, is that yes. uh, last night in Soho? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that yeah she's her? in that. I haven't seen it, but okay. she's in that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that was a good movie. That was a good movie. And she was I should check it out. It's 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 Edgar Wright. I like him. He did Scott Pilgrim. Oh, Pilgrim that explains those, yeah. a whole lot. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, yeah, that, that's his latest. So, <laughs> I know. Remember back in the day when you used to focus on the director, and then yeah, movies became producer driven. You started forgetting that we actually have good talented directors out there, and then you're like, "Wow, I like that movie." It's almost as good as other movie by that one director. Oh, it's the same director. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like I've had that happen. Uh, Super Mario, do the next one. We'll do this one real quick about the reviews. Uh, and and I don't I don't know what the article says specifically, but right now I'm looking at Rotten Tomato, fifty six percent from you know the the shill media, ninety six percent audience score. You know audience what I'd like, like to it. do is take that graphic. Send it to, uh, what's her name, Grace Randolph, and say, which one of these two is your audience, Grace? Get your head out of your ass and start using your brain if you still have one. Welcome, Josh Ruby. Uh, yeah, did you did you see her review for this? I couldn't get through I did, it. Well, I, I saw clips it. of it on uh, <sighs> Midnight's Edge. That's all I need. I'm not going to give her any friggin' clicks. Okay, as of, yeah, that's probably the best course of action, actually. As of right now, Nintendo and Illuminations, the Super Mario Brothers movie, is at 56% of Rotten Tomatoes, up from 54% when I checked earlier today. That's a Rotten Tomatoes score by uh, RT's metrics and needs to get up to the mid-60s to go fresh. Uh, but here's the thing. Most of the gaming and entertainment critics seem to love the movie. Uh, most of the negative reviews seem to be written by non-gamer critics who don't want, have a half- have a baked-in affection for the games and characters. To me, that suggests this is a video game adaptation aimed directly at its target audience. If that means some non-gamers and non-Mario fans get lost along the way, so be it. I'm tired of adaptations trying to appeal to everyone and losing the very thing that makes the original source material so great in the process. Grace, this is from, I think, Ethan Ethan Kane, right? Uh, Grace Randolph, discussing the film on her YouTube channel, Beyond the Trailer, describes the film as totally inaccessible, for non-fans of the Super Mario game from Nintendo. Fans okay. might even have a... Okay, yes, now, hold ahead. right there, okay? I want to know, then, what you, Deleted Scenes, think about that statement. Because, from what you said earlier, you weren't a big fan of the games and didn't know all the lore and stuff. Did you have a hard time following this movie? Did you need, like, some instruction manual or some cliff notes? Absolutely not. I, 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 this, she clearly did not see the film. Just off of, you know, what I heard her say during the clips of the review that I've heard, she either had someone watch this movie for her. Uh huh. Or, you know, I, I, I don't want to say what I really want to say, but <laughs> she, she, she comes off in her review non intelligent. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's that's I, probably I, the most uh, diplomatic way you could say it. You know, I I sat in an audience of eight year olds who had no problem following this movie. So that is that was exactly oh that was exactly my point because it was from everything I've heard. Although adults and especially fans of these games will enjoy this movie, it was written for children. You said eight-year-olds. Eight-year-olds who probably did not grow up with these games, never played these games, right. are only going to now experience whatever new games they are putting out. I, I have a question for you. How did the uh, eight-year-olds uh, respond to this movie in the audience? Were they rapt attention? Did they enjoy it? Were they laughing? Oh, very much so. Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, and, and they're pointing out, oh, it's, you know, it's that character, it's this character. Oh, they're here, they're there. You know, and, 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 and Grace Randolph and her review is, is constantly crowing about, you know, not being able to explain. I sat in a theater with a bunch of kids who didn't need it explained to them. You know what I mean? I don't. I, it's a kid's I movie. Well, I heard she also had a problem with the fact that they wore gloves or something like that. I'm like, oh, yeah, Seriously? it's all explained. It's all there. It, you know, yes. Everything is everything is stated flat out in a way that is very easy to understand and bite sized. 
and it, you know. So, so it, what you're basically saying is Grace Randolph doesn't have the intelligence of an eight year old. I get it. I agree <laughs> with on. you too. She was complaining in her view about Bowser, and it's like I don't understand. Like, like Bowser wants to marry her. Do we really need this type of thing in a post to Harvey Weinstein world? Yeah. And it's like he's the bad guy. He. It, but what's funny about him is he is in love with Princess Peach. Yeah, and that's why he's invading. And so he actually has a romantic side. And it was funny hearing Jack he Black in the interviews and, explain. Well, and, you know, this, this, oh, he does this thing, love it. Just comes from. A, go ahead. Mm-hmm. The, the thing that I, I wanted to equate to that, um, and, and not and clearly not understanding what a true villain does. Um, right. There's a movie. Um, there was a movie about 20 years ago called Fear dot com. I remember that one, yes. Okay. At the end of the movie, um, our hero thinks he has disarmed the villain. And Mm -hmm. the villain pulls another gun and shoots and, spoiler alert, kills the hero. Yeah. Oh. Now, the director on the director commentary had people who wanted him to re-edit that ending. It was why? Well, well, I mean, but he lied <laughs> about having a gun, and he went. Of course, he lied. He's the villain, right? The villain lied. <laughs> you know, uh, duh. <laughs> you know, so you know. And I'm thinking that this is kind of the same thing here. Well, the villain acts like a villain. I'll be honest. Oh my with you. God! I, alert the media. You, know? you literally just described the same mentality of people who think that that uh, safe spaces yeah. will prevent gun violence. I mean, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean. Oh, that's funny. Do uh, you know what word I keep sh- having show up in a lot of the critics' reviews? They say too much fan service. Well, I we're getting too that much again. fan service if you hate money. Because yeah. apparently, saying- look at look at the history. You give fan service. You make money. Look at this one. Look at Sonic the Hedgehog. Look Ghost at every successful life. film you've seen in the past decade or so. It's been movies that the fans liked. You make movies that the fans don't like, and you go broke. You end up like Disney. Yeah. I well, I asked about that. I'm sorry, Boomer. I, I asked ahead, about man. that. in. Uh, I, I had a, a Fletcher Williams, who I think we both know. He's been in our chats. Uh-huh. Um, uh, he he brought up that the movie is his words one hundred percent fan service, and I said, it, "Well, in a good way or in a bad way?" He said, "No, in a good way." Yeah, you know. So I'm like, you know, hey, you know, I'm I'm totally fine with that. You know, if it, if it's fan service in service of, you know, giving people what they want or expect, see, there then is there's nothing wrong with it. There, and, and what you allude to is there are two very different kinds of fan service. There's the fan mm-hmm. service that I think a lot of fans are getting from third season of, of, of uh, Star Trek Picard, you know, written in a in a way that logically seems to make sense with the characters that you've you've grown up with, you know, with not Easter eggs so much as they are acknowledgments of the actual canon and history that those characters would know about in, in a, a real lived in world. Um, the other kind of fan service is when you're doing whatever the heck you feel like that is completely detached from anything, but then you throw in the little member berries, like, you know, uh, uh, Captain Lorca having a, a, a skeleton of a Gorn and having a Tribble in his, his office. See, we know Trek things. And, but yeah. everything else is completely broken and completely detached from the canon. You know? Well, we get to start fresh with the new canon with this Mario movie. Granted, this is a series aimed at children. They could do stuff that's more aimed at older audiences, like with a Metroid movie, if they want. They could. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That could be a PG-13 real easy. Um, Zelda can go in either direction because I've seen it done both cartoon like and also more mature so they can go in either way with uh with zelda so i don't yeah. know what they'll try to do um do you want to send the last article troy the the gross box office while we wrap that one uh was that this one no the next one super mario brothers goes 
Plum bonks or pump. Oh, plum okay, bonks. okay. I'm sorry. I gave you the wrong one. Bear That's the me. link to Midnight's Edge, though. You should check out that or their little video clip. Oh, right, 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 right. That's Absolutely. what that one yeah. was. Okay. Hold on. I'm, 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 I'm with the copy paste. Fingers not work right. So Topi um, makes a point. Fan service is not the same as member ba- berries. Right. Yeah. That is true. That is that is absolutely true. But I think that there are people that refer to that as fan service. And you're right. It shouldn't be. Fan service can be as wrong. So it really depends on what you mean when you complain about fan service. Yeah, well, I'm thinking back even to the Japanese definition of what it meant, which is not what the American critics are meaning. But... Uh... Super Mario Brothers simulates Disney establishing current by rejecting wokeness, and I think it does. Did I but still, I think did I still drop the you wrong did. one? You did. Oh okay. gosh, what is wrong with me? Let me just interrupt while you're doing that, though. I, I do want to say that at least now, while we're complaining about stuff that Disney has been doing with their animated features, I think parents can understand that there are alternatives to Disney animated features now. You have Illumination, you have DreamWorks. They're putting out good stuff. You take your kids to see it, and until Disney gets their act together, and I know that uh, John Lasseter working for Skydance mm-hmm. over over for you know in conjunction with Apple, I know he's trying to rebuild Pixar without the name, but that's what he's doing over there. So I think the future for animated features features is bright huh. for families. Just maybe skip the Disney the Disney title. Yeah, and I mean, and if if his um, his former cohorts, those who who. Si- who or who are still at Disney who sided with him but had to keep quiet if he can poach them over yep. uh, to Skydance I mean sky's the limit and Skydance that's still the same company that financed um, Maverick it's just this is their animation division right that, that's correct I kept confusing them with Blue Sky which was the old Fox animation studio which unfortunately got again that's Disney's third animation yeah, studio they have Got gutted, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, here we go. Uh, Nintendo Universal Super Mario Brothers movie has made history with the biggest worldwide opening ever for an animated title at $377.5 million. Of that plum puzzle result, an estimated $172.8 million comes from international box office. Wahoo, indeed. Uh, the movie just took off with audiences and four quad to boot. Now we're looking at a potential one billion worldwide grocer. Fans are loving it, and it's expected to have strong legs with no clear competition in the marketplace going forward. We listed global milestones yesterday. See below, but it bears repeating that this is the biggest worldwide opening for animation ever, and Natch of 2023 best for Illumination ever, biggest video game adaptation ever, and in just the first frame of is uh, fully the fourth biggest Hollywood adaptation animation globally since the pandemic began. Uh, plumbing down to international markets, Mexico is just insane with 27.4 million. It hit third biggest opening weekend of all time, I guess, for Mexico. Universal's best and animated best, UK, United Kingdom finals with 19.6 million. Illumination's best and tops for video game adaptations, among other records. Germany, 14 million. China, amid uh, mad reactions to Hollywood movies in our late, did 12 million, including the biggest opening day for studio animated title in the pandemic era. France paid 10 Point four million across opening. Um, I think it was WDW Pro or was it Valiant Renegade? One of those two. They were mentioning that uh, this hasn't even haven't, hasn't even come out in Japan or South Korea yet, and those right. are going to be big markets. Think about Japan; they're going to rush to see this thing. It's and their, and to uh, their, their, to their evoke culture icons, evoke what I've learned from uh, Valiant Renegade. Uh, not only do you need to look at what this. Uh, opening week and actually turns out to be, but what kind of legs it has. I'm telling you, with this strong of an opening, that means incredible word of mouth and probably some repeat visits to the theater. So watch for this to keep doing well for a couple weeks anyway. Yeah, I think it's going to have say, legs. I think we're going to get close to about $500 million global Uh by this, you know, by, you know, Friday of next, you're next Friday. So the first week, right? Uh, and then we go into another weekend where people go, hey, I've been hearing nothing but great things about, you know, the, the record ba- breaking uh, uh, numbers for, for Mario. Maybe that's what we'll go see this weekend. 
those yeah. that haven't seen it yet. And also repeat viewers, fooling people that want to go see it a yeah. second time. Because we're uh, talking a kid's film. Hey, kids, what do you want to see this week? I want to see Mario. You saw Mario last week. And we want to see Mario. Okay, we'll go see Mario. I th- I hope this helps Illumination. They they put out some good movies of the years. I enjoyed Sing. Uh, I know you're a big fan of those Minions movies, right, Troy? So, I mean, I really am. And, and I had nothing against Sing. I did like it. It was like American Idol with animals. <laughs> Am I wrong? I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. <laughs> Here's the weirdest scene, the koala in that. I kept thinking Martin Short was doing his voice, and then it turned out it was Matthew McConaughey of all people. Yeah, Google. I know, right? I thought it was Martin Short. I'm like, oh, that's Martin Short. No, it's Matthew McConaughey. So um, I think this movie's going to do very well. It's beaten out uh, Frozen 2. It beat out Disney's top. So yep. I don't know. Like... Disney has to get their act together, especially on the animation front, and maybe stop preaching to the audience and just giving the audience. And don't say that there's no market for animated features for families, because obviously there is. So, I honestly think that the only way this can go is uh, the only way Disney's going to turn around is if Nelson Peltz and you know the people on his side of the uh, investment aisle start going. Okay, uh, it's time for the the adults to enter the room. We gave you a chance. You blew it. Here we are. And, uh, you know, if you don't step aside, we're going to start suing for uh, dereliction of of fiscal responsibility. I think it's uh, I think it's overdue. Deleted scenes. You got any final thoughts? Uh, My final thoughts are uh, this is what we have been looking for, especially in family entertainment. Children are the target audience. They are not talked down to. They will enjoy it. Um, And there are things in there that uh, adults can latch on to. You know, there there are references to Mad Max. um, There are. To Gladiator. um, You know, to, you know... You know, not just, you know, action films of the past, but games that they played. There's something in here for everyone. And, you know, when I say, you know, in my outro, this is how we win. This movie is one of the ways we win. Yep. There's no there's no pandering and there's no wokeness. It, it's simply an entertaining family film. So this is what we need to support. And uh, hopefully we get more Nintendo movies. And mm-hmm. I, I, for one, am rooting for a Punch-Out movie. That's that's number one of mine. And I could eat, I could see them either getting Mike Tyson to be in it, you know, reference Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, or maybe have Sylvester Sloan voice Mr. Dream, the character, the, the other, the alternative uh, final character from the years of Punch-Out. Mm. You could have him be the adversar- adversarial. That might be kind of funny, actually. So I don't know. Especially since Little Mac is, is in some ways kind of like a cartoon version of Rocky, if, if, you, if, you, if you look at that game correctly, you know. he's So, I don't know. We'll see. Um, all right. I think that about wraps it up. We are going to be heading directly over to Netter's Network. Yep. I just dropped the we're link. Be doing so, a, if you want we're to... We're going to be doing uh, a... Hmm? Go, ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, if you guys all want to watch, uh, you know, the... Uh, the uh, the holiday special, uh, it's the Easter Beagle, Charlie Brown. We will be uh, watching it together. Uh, you get over there, the link will be provided to the Cosme link so that you can uh, Follow watch along. along with us. Because as we all know, all these Peanuts shows have now been hidden behind paywalls. Yeah. So like I said, uh, head on over to Netter's Network. We will see you there. And uh, looking forward to it. Are you coming with us on uh, deleted scenes? You're gonna uh, you're coming over to the letters as well. I'm in. Yeah, sure. All right. Cool. All okay, right. Uh, it, it's a classic. Happy Easter, everybody! And uh, I will see you next week. And uh, we'll probably do the rundown on Netters Network of stuff going on this week, right? So, okay. Uh, yeah, All and right. you know what? Uh, everyone, come on over by us, and we'll uh, we'll fill you in on the whole week. I'll drop all those links over there. Cool beans. All right. Because we'll have a little bit longer over there. Mary is a fun family film that knows what it is and doesn't try to do anything else. Yep. Also, give me an animated Mega Man movie. 
Capcom has to get their act together. Cool. That needs to happen. That would be cool. That, an animated Mega Man movie. They could do a lot with that. Well, All I'll right, tell y'all, you what, uh, the success of this film is probably going to light a fire under a lot of companies' butts. I hope so. All right, take care, guys. Happy Easter. See you See next y'all. week. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.